Okay, welcome back. Hi there. In this video, we're going to spend a few minutes thinking about a really important aspect of economic cycles, and that is the concept of supply side shocks. Now, all countries experience economic shocks, unexpected events, some of which come from within the domestic economy, within the boundaries of a nation, but many flow from outside an economic system. And the phrase we use for these is external shocks. And these shocks, these unexpected events, create disruption. They create a macroeconomic disequilibrium affecting both the rate of growth, uh, the rate of inflation, unemployment, real incomes, and many other key macroeconomic indicators. When we think about supply side shocks, essentially, they are shocks which affect a sufficient range of producers to have a macroeconomic impact. And broadly speaking, uh, shocks can be both adverse or positive. So an adverse supply side shock causes an unexpected increase in costs or causes a negative effect on production, uh, leading to the short run aggregate supply curve to shift to the left, leading to uh, higher inflation and other things being the same, a fall in real output. However, we can also have positive supply side shocks. These cause lower supply costs causing aggregate supply in the short run to shift to the right, an outward shift, and this helps to reduce inflation and causes an expansion of real GDP. So we think about some examples of adverse supply side shocks, the obvious one recently, I'm speaking, recording this video in the spring of 2022. So the obvious one recently will be the huge surge in the world price of natural gas due in large part to supply shortages, but also a, a, a pickup in demand. Here's the chart affecting the, showing the, the, the enormous increase in the, the European price of natural gas, much of which is, of course, uh, imported from, from Russia. The United States has seen an increase, but not to the same extent. Another good example is the pandemic. Uh, the, the COVID pandemic led to long lockdowns with with lots of normal economic activity, normal economic activity, production essentially shut down. And this particularly affected, for example, the shipping industry, because ships were often in the, in the wrong place and not able to move to meet demand. So that led to a prolonged delays in the delivery of goods and a steep increase in the cost of, of hiring the limited shipping capacity. So there's also been lots of, lots of supply chain disruptions, disruptions caused by the, the pandemic. So how do we model a supply side shock? If you get this as an exam question, how would you model it? Well, another good example would be something like the, the, the semiconductor shortage that plagued the, well, the technology sectors and the automotive industries during the pandemic. So this would be a good example to use. If there's a significant fall in supply and increase in the price of semiconductors, other things being the same, Keteris Paribus, the aggregate supply curve shifts to the left, from SRS1 to SRS2. That has negative effects on real GDP and, of course, also causes uh, an increase in the general price level. So there's your basic model of a supply side shock. You could, however, develop the diagram because if prices start going up, that might lead to wages increasing as well as people bargain and bid for for inflation compensating pay claims. In which case, other things being the same, aggregate supply could shift to the left even further. Again, negative for growth, and it also causes higher inflation. So this would be a good diagram to draw showing the short-term effects of a supply-side shock and the possible consequences for inflation. There are also, however, positive supply side shocks. So sometimes things can happen which bring down the cost of production, increasing supply to the economy. So a positive supply shock occurs when there's an event that causes the output of a product or commodity to increase and therefore becomes more readily available more at a cheaper price to consumers. A good example would be a cut in import tariffs. Tariffs, of course, are tax on imports. And if you get significant import tariff reductions, firms that have to import raw materials, commodities, component parts and things, their costs will go down. This is a, a quick look at UK import tariffs in 2022. Uh, by the way, these tariffs apply to countries, third party countries with whom we don't have a, a free trade agreement. 
and most imports also have VAT applied to them of 20%. But there's a 12% import tariff on beef, for example. 6% tariff on chewing gum. Eggs are taxed at £25 per 100 kilograms. Uh, 4% tariffs on textile fabrics and microwave ovens. So if those taxes came down, if the import tariff was lowered or even removed, that would reduce the costs of producers, for example, using textiles. Another good example is the emergence and the adoption of uh, new technologies. Technological breakthroughs introduce new systems or innovations into an economy and that can effectively lower supply costs, and lower prices. Again, we'd probably want to use a diagram to show this. So with a positive supply side shock, here's our initial equilibrium. Supply increases an outward shift of aggregate supply shown there, causing real GDP to go up and inflationary pressures to come down. There would be your positive supply side shock. In terms of the micro impact, if, if you're thinking synoptically here, uh, typically if you have an adverse supply shock, businesses face higher costs of production. Uh, you can probably visualise that using a cost and revenue curve diagram, which could lead to a fall in profits, potentially losses, and less firms can raise their own prices. If profits are falling because of higher costs, firms may decide to cut back on planned investment. Uh, that will be negative for them. On the other hand, uh, some firms benefit from these shocks. So we've seen the big increase in world oil and gas prices, leading to an increase in demand for double glazing, for example, an increase in demand for renewable energy. But also there might be a demand side effect for businesses because if consumers are seeing their real incomes go down, they'll be spending less. So revenues may shift inwards. Households obviously affected at the micro level by adverse supply shocks. Uh, we've seen a steep increase in fuel poverty in the UK, which is where households spend at least 10% of their disposable income just heating their homes and things. And that's clearly causing a lot of issues for millions of people. High food prices have a direct negative effect, a squeeze on consumers' real purchasing power. At a micro level, wages tend to go up. Depends on the collective bargaining power of unions. And there's also a big risk of families falling deeper into debt, particularly when they're faced with a, an astronomical increase in the, in the energy bills. And households might be savers as well. And if inflation goes up and the interest rates don't compensate, the real interest rate on savings and the real value of savings can go down. And of course, at a macro level, these supply side shocks are really quite important. The most obvious effect is inflation. Uh, you're going to get a rise in cost push inflation. For example, in the UK, inflation's forecast to average 7% in 2022. It could at some point during the year reach more than 10%. And 7%, of course, is more than three times, or it's three and a half times, the 2% CPI inflation target. One of the risks of a supply shock is that although it could be temporary, uh, it might cause a period, a longer period of stagflation which is this combination of rising inflation and slowing economic growth. Not a, not a good place to be. Countries that are net importers of energy and foodstuffs, of course, will also see a worsening of their trade position. Typically, the demand for these essential inputs is price inelastic. So if the world price goes up, you have to spend more on those things. But of course, you may not have the foreign exchange reserves to be able to do that. Uh, at a macro level, interest rates can go up, partly because the central bank might decide to start tightening monetary policy to control inflation. And more broadly, adverse supply shocks, hitting profits, hitting real incomes, can cause a, a fall in business and consumer confidence, a, a worsening of sentiment, which then has a direct effect on aggregate demand, in particular consumption and investment may fall. Well, crucially, all countries experience shocks, but the impact will vary from country to country. So if you think about a low income nation with a very high import dependency on food and fertilizer and energy, if the world price goes up, that can have a hugely damaging effect on their economies and can often reverse progress made in cutting poverty. The micro and macro impact of a supply shock depends also in part on whether it's a temporary disruption lasting perhaps a few weeks or maybe a few months or 
is it a supply shock that has has legs in the sense it's going to be around for some time? So it could be a, a, a slightly more chronic long term supply issue. Problems caused, by example, uh, conflict, civil war, trade wars that go on and the lengthy global health crisis, as we've seen, of course, in the world economy in the last two years. So supply shocks are important. Please do build your uh, revision, um, uh, build into your revision. Sorry, the, the idea of shocks on the supply side. It's really important. It's very topical and it certainly allows you to put in some excellent analysis on your on your on the macroeconomics of cycles. Huge thanks for joining in. Stay safe, stay happy, stay curious and see you again sometime soon.